Okay, so we'll say that f is a function of n variables. We'll call those variables x1 up to xn. If it's a rule that assigns a unique real number to each one of these points in D, where D is the domain. And often we'll use this notation. So we'll have f with a colon rn. So, um, and sometimes we'll replace this with just D, where D is a subset of rn. Um, meaning the domain up to R. Great, and so this is like the domain and the codomain. And so we'll write F of X1 to Xn, and here, like I said before, D is the domain. So in this video, what I really wanna do is look at a couple of examples of finding the domain of such functions and sketching the domain. So we'll mostly look at two variable functions and maybe one three variable function. Okay, so the first one I wanna look at is the following. Let's say F of X, Y equals, 3x squared plus 2y over xy. Okay, so just as a, a brief reminder, we can plug points into this. So if we find f12, that means we're replacing x with 1 and y with 2. So that's going to give us 3 plus 6, sorry, 3 plus 4 because 2 times 2 is 4 over 1 times 2, which is 2. Great, so this is 7 over 2. Okay, now what about the domain? So the domain is gonna go the same way that it would for a one variable function. You wanna look for all the rules that you can't break. Zeros in the denominators, negative under square roots, uh, non-positive things in natural logs and so on and so forth. So here what we want is we want x times y to not be equal to zero. So what that means is that x is not equal to zero and y is not equal to zero. So we can sketch our domain in the following way. So remember the domain is going to be a subset of R2 in this case because we have x, y. Maybe we could say that this is the x axis and the y axis. And the domain is going to be everything except for the coordinate axes. So it's a little bit tricky because the coordinate axes are drawn in there, but it's everything except for those coordinate axes. Okay, great. So I'm gonna clean up the board and then we'll look at another couple of examples. Okay, so let's look at these two examples. We have f of xy equals xy. That's the one that we'll look at first. So in this case, we know that x times y needs to be bigger than or equal to zero because we don't want negatives under the radical. But this really splits up into two possibilities. So if you take the product of two positive numbers, you obviously get a positive number. But if you take the product of two negative numbers, you also get a positive number. So this gives us either x and y are bigger than or equal to zero or x and y are less than or equal to zero. Okay, so now we can plot that in the plane. Notice that's exactly describing the first quadrant and the third quadrant and also the coordinate axes are allowed here. So here I'll put in yellow solid line the coordinate axes to show that we're including those and then we can shade all of this and all of this. So this is the domain of this function. Okay, good. So now let's look at this next one. We have f of x, y is the square root of y squared minus x over one minus x. And so there are two things going on here. We need y squared minus x to be bigger than or equal to zero, and we need x to not be equal to plus or minus one. I've gone ahead and solved that for zero in the denominator. Okay, so now notice that this gives us um, y squared is bigger than or equal to x, which is maybe better written as x is less than or equal to y squared. So let's take care of this one first. So notice uh, y equals x squared is like an upward facing parabola, but x equals y squared is a sideways facing parabola. So we can put that in there. So this right here, maybe we'll put this in yellow. Is the parabola x equals y squared. 
And so we know that that is allowed, so I've put it in solid yellow, but then also we can take all x that are less than this y squared, but that's gonna be everything to the left. So now we can shade everything to the left of this, except when x is equal to negative one. So that's not allowed. So here we'll go over here maybe to, this is negative one, and we need to extract that line. So maybe we could extract that line by uh, unshading it. Great, and then also we have to extract x equals one, so maybe we could extract that by again unshading that line. So maybe I'll put a red to mean that we've taken it away. So this line has been taken away, and then also th this line has been taken away. So it's everything in yellow subtracted with everything in red. Okay, good, so I'm gonna clean up the board and then we're gonna look at one more example. Okay, so I've decided to do two more examples that are related to each other. So the first one will be this. We have f of xy is the square root of the quantity 9 minus x squared minus y squared. So we know our rule says that um, everything in the radical needs to be non-negative. So that means we need 9 minus x squared minus y squared to be bigger than or equal to 0. So moving stuff around, that gives us x squared plus y squared has to be less than or equal to 9. So uh, it's really important maybe first to look at the place where x squared plus y squared equals 9. And just as a reminder, that is a circle of radius 3. So we'll say here this is the curve x squared plus y squared equals 9. But what we want is everything contained in that circle less than or equal to 9. So that means our domain in this case will be this circle right here. Okay, good. Now let's look at the three-dimensional version of this. So again, we're going to need everything under the radical to be bigger than or equal to 0, which is going to tell us that x squared plus y squared plus z squared has to be less than or equal to 4. But let's think about what that is. And so if x squared plus y squared equals 9 is a circle, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4 is a sphere, and here the radius is 2, which is the square root of 4. So we can draw a sphere here. Maybe we'll put this in yellow. So this is representing a sphere of radius 2, but we don't want just the edge of that sphere. Here, I'll write the edge of the sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. We want also everything inside that sphere, which makes it actually called a ball. So here I can shade the inside of this, and here we have the domain of this function is a ball of radius 2 centered at the origin. Okay, that's a good place to stop this video.